In this video, we are going to be looking at MongoDB. One of the questions I got recently was, if I have two collections, one of those collections is products and one of those collections is ratings, um, and I'm joining, let's say, collection, uh, what is it, the products to ratings, or if I create a collection, I should say, of ratings to join to products, why not just use uh, SQL? And that's interesting, but that's not the only way to look at that, especially with MongoDB. So we're gonna look at a couple of examples here. Uh, in this case, or I guess one example. And in fact, we will actually look at a product. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start Mongo and we'll go through this. I'm just gonna clear my screen too. Um, all right, so <clears throat> let's say that we have a collection and I don't know if I do or not, but I'm just gonna create it. If I don't, for those of you who don't remember, um, you can read or watch the MongoDB series. Um, if you insert into a collection that doesn't exist, it starts, it exists. Um, immediately, so you don't have to explicitly create it. Not that I'm recommending going around and doing that, by the way, but uh, all right, but we'll just do it this way. Okay, so let's suppose we have a product. Uh, well, let's, let's say book, book name. Book, we'll just call it book. Well, uh, it's technically title, and uh, I'm not gonna spend too much time trying to figure out how to organize this. Okay, so we have a name of a book called um, Great Book. And let's say we have a price of this book and the book it cost a dollar. And let's say that we have ratings. So right off the bat, you see something uh, with the design that I'm doing here. And that design is I'm going ahead. I'm gonna space this out just so that I know, but I'm adding ratings to this collection. So I have the product in this collection, but I have the ratings right here, right? And so we'll add a, a sub document here. This is gonna be an array of sub documents for those of you who are wondering what the logic is. And I am gonna explicitly create an ID in this case, um, just for demonstration purposes, because I would want to have a rating, uh, I'm sorry, a ranking of the ratings. So in this particular case, let's say the rating is five okay and I close bracket and then there we go products inserted okay now i'm going to go back i'm going to just reuse this and we're going to call this other one bad book just to demonstrate the the uh what is it just to demonstrate the ratings that is and we'll have a rating for this book and we're going to give it a rating of zero okay and so we have two so now if i do uh, db uh, dot products uh, dot find and dot pretty then I'll look at that and we'll see we have our two books okay so you'll notice that to answer the user's question why would I create another collection of ratings for products and have a collection of products you could do it that way not sure why but you could all right but one of the questions would be like okay but what would happen if uh, let's say we did have the ratings inside of the product how would we go about updating those ratings so what we want to do now is we want to add a sub or an existing sub document to a, uh, a document well the first thing to understand or to an existing sub document we want to add a sub document to an existing document i'm doing two things at once performing and thinking not the not the easiest thing in the world to do okay so the first thing is going back to this um the first thing is when a user let's say is adding a rating to something they already have the product pulled up in other words the database equivalent to that in this case would be db.products.find right and then we're going to specify the book in this case, oops, we're going to specify the book, and the book in this case is great book. And n underneath the surface, it would be, of course, object ID. That's how we would actually run the update. In this case, I'm going to run the update with a uh, what is it with that great book? But what the person is actually doing is they're selecting that. In fact, let's just do it this way instead. We'll do that because the person has this pulled up, right? That's what they're, when they're rating a product, and again, the, the user doesn't know this on the other end. If somebody's using Amazon and they're rating a product, they have that product pulled up. I'll keep the screen, screen clean, right? So what happens when they want to add an update? What's the database underlying function going on here? So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go DB products, and then we're gonna do update. We have our name, great book, and we're gonna do comma, and we're gonna open a bracket. And sometimes I have to space this out for my own mental sanity to understand where I'm at. Sometimes I don't, okay? So it's ratings, is that right? Yes, ratings, okay? So we have ratings, and what we wanna do is we wanna add a new rating. Well, we know, and, and the, the ID has to be, um, what is it? the ID has to be unique in this case. So this is gonna be our set, second rating. 
And of course, that functionality would be built into the app, like when it gets the document, it's going to get the latest rating so that if somebody wants to add a rating uh, to, to go on from there. Okay, we have the rating of five. And then, of course, we're going to close. There's our second document. Uh, doot doot, and then we're going to close that. So we've closed our push. So remember that the user is when they're on that product, right? And they're about to rate it as a five again. They're going to be doing this functionality. They don't know that, but they're already selecting this object. And again, the underlying query would actually be the the ID object ID, and that's because that's unique in this case. There could be multiple um, books that would be named Great Book. So this would I'm using this for demonstration purposes only. This is not how it'd be written. And we see that we have that match, and we see that we have that modified. And so let's look at the Great Book again, and we see oh, there's a second rating, right? And so um, that's. What I mean when I say we don't actually, in MongoDB, we don't have to develop two different collections. Yes, in the world of SQL, what we would have is we would have a products table and in our products table, in fact, we would probably have a pricing table as well because prices change. I don't think we would want to include the price in the products. So we'd have like a product ID and then the product name, and then we would have like a product ID and price table, and then we would have like a, what is it, a product ID, and then we would have uh, a rating uh, potentially an associative table, by the way. We could have a rating ID that links to rating, but if we could just do it directly and we could just say a, uh, what is it, a rating and then a product ID joined over. And so you end up with when you pull up a product, you might hit mm, anywhere from, you know, two to five tables, right? Whereas in MongoDB, when you pull up a product, you're hitting one collection. Right, that's what you're actually hitting. When and again, you could develop it where you're you're developing multiple collections, but why? Like if we look at this, we have the great book, we have price, we have ratings, and whatever other detail we would need. It's just building the functionality of those collections into that application layer. And keep in mind, for those of you who've worked, especially in the middleware part of applications, you've let's say you develop things in SQL Server, right? You, you have to still get those tables through a query. Let's say you're using Entity Framework. How do you go about updating that? You still have to pass some type of update through Entity Framework to go to the database layer, right? Well, that's what you're doing here. The difference is you're doing it through these, this collection structure, whereas on the SQL Server side, you're doing it through this Entity Framework table structure, right? Um, so you don't need to do things in MongoDB the SQL way. You can if you want, though I'm not sure why, but you certainly can, but as we see here, you don't need two collections for, uh, what is it, products and ratings. We could actually have the ratings as a sub-document uh, within products. And if I were developing things, let's say, on MongoDB, now if, if I was doing things in the SQL way, it would be different, but if I was doing something in MongoDB, that is the way I would go about developing it. I would not be developing it where the, uh, what is it, the products and the ratings of those products are uh, separate collections.